This week we're driving the 2022 Jeep Grand Cherokee Trailhawk. And if you didn't already know, the Grand Cherokee is probably one of the best SUVs on the market. Let's back that up by uh, taking a full look around this vehicle and talking more about the Trailhawk itself. But before we do jump into the Trailhawk, let's quickly cover the other trim levels available with the Grand Cherokee. At the base, you have the Laredo, then the Altitude, the Limited, the Overland, then the Trailhawk. And then at the top of the line, you have the Summit and Summit Reserve. And of course, now we have the L, which is the long version of the Grand Cherokee, which gives it a third row, something I've been asking Jeep to do for a long time because taking the best SUV on the market and giving it a third row and keeping everything that's great about it was a no-brainer to me. I have driven it at an event. I have not had it for a full week to review. Haven't had the chance to put the family in it and see how that third row actually works out. Now about a month and a half or so, I did review the Summit Reserve Grand Cherokee and of course loved it. You can go check out that video. I'll link it down in the description if you're interested. Obviously this is a Trailhawk. Let's jump into what we get here. So this new Trailhawk does feature standard all-terrain tires, an integrated off-road camera, Jeep's quad lift air suspension with up to 11.3 inches of ground clearance, improved approach angles, departure angles, and breakover angles, and the Quadra Drive 2 active transfer case with rear E limited slip differential and select terrain. So really just a ton to talk about. Let's jump into the exterior design. So when it comes to exterior, you do get a lot of bits here that you don't see on the other trims to really make this thing stand out. Namely, those red tow hooks, two on the front, one on the back. You do have that revised bumper for the more aggressive approach angle. You have the decals on the hood which look really good in this silver zenith paint color. Obviously nice LED headlights, LED fog lights. We do get those standard 18 inch machine face painted aluminum wheels. They look just fine on this thing, but what looks even better are these beefy 265-60R18 all-terrain tires. This is definitely a step in the right direction for off-roading your Grand Cherokee. Trying to do that with some summer tires on here just isn't the way to go, but these things are beefy and look the part. Around the side, you also see that new Grand Cherokee badging with the US flag there. We also obviously have the trail rated 4x4 badge on the side, showing that this thing is capable and around the back, the LED tail lights, thinner and more stylized. Obviously your Jeep logo on that hatch, your 4x4 logo and your Trailhawk logo. And let's not forget that red tow hook. And then just because you're driving the Trailhawk doesn't mean you can't get creature comforts. We do get an automatic popping rear hatch, which is really nice. And you get 37.7 cubic feet of cargo volume back here. Plenty to throw in camping gear obviously our camera gear fits back here just fine grocery shopping just fine back here you can fold those rear seats down and increase that cargo volume you do have a 120 volt accessory port back here spare tire is under the mat here but let's go ahead and close it up and check out what's under the hood All right, when selecting a Jeep, you do have a couple of engine options. This is the 3.6 liter V6. It pushes 293 horsepower, 260 foot-pounds of torque, and is matched up to an eight-speed automatic transmission. Of course, you also have a V8 option, which isn't necessary, but can be fun. I think this power plant is a good option in this vehicle, but we'll talk more about that as we take it for a drive. But before we can do that, let's jump in the interior take a look around the inside and the tech then we'll take it for a drive all right guys and welcome to the interior of the grand cherokee trail hawk 
First thing you might notice are these seats. The interior here is black on black. Jeep calls it global black. We do have red stitching in the seats, obviously that Trailhawk badge, and it is all really nice. Let me uh, pick you guys up and give you a better tour around. All right, first off, let's talk about some of this trimming. The trim is unique. You've got this like cross hatched look to these trim pieces. It's super difficult to actually get on camera. Kind of looks like it's just scratched up, but it's supposed to be like that and looks really good in person. Obviously more uh, black leather, leatherish materials, red stitching, soft touch materials up here, leather steering wheel with red stitching. And that same cross hatch pattern is right here. And obviously we've got that Trail Hawk logo. I did glaze right past this 10.1 inch screen with Uconnect 5, but we got to turn it on to really see it. So like I said, that is a 10.1 inch touchscreen display. Lots of great uh, screens here. Nice controls. We do have the full surround view camera. So you can see all the way around the vehicle. You can see a rear camera view, a front camera view. So for trailing, all this is really nice. We do have a good navigation system in here which is always nice to have. Lots of apps and connectivity, including Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Alexa integration. It's got wireless Apple CarPlay, and you do have a wireless charger down here for your phone. We've got buttons up here on top of the display. Turn off your auto shut off, lane keeping, traction control, parking sensors, hazard lights, we do have heated seats and ventilated seats. It's chilly outside, so we'll have those heated seats on. Some of your audio controls, heated steering wheel, AC and heat controls all here. Really nice, a little bit further down. We do have both USB type C and USB type A charging ports and a 12 volt accessory port. You have your terrain management control here. So just a flip up of this little knob thing and you can get into that rock, sand, mud, snow, an auto mode or a sport mode. If you can see what's flashing over here, this is your height adjustment. So we have the air suspension with height adjustments. And because I put it into a uh, rock sand mode, it uh, raised it up, but you can manually put it back down with flipping this one. And then of course your gear selector here is just a rotary knob put it into reverse, you get that reverse camera in 360. And it's a good looking, good feeling knob, lots of texture on the side, easy to spin. Some people don't like the rotary knobs and the electronic shifting, but of course I don't have any issues with it. It's a, uh, it does its job just fine. You do have a button here for four low, which is great for off-roading, a speed control, a sway bar disconnect here, again, Great stuff for off-roading. Nice cup holders, nice cushy armrest with some nice pockets in there. Back to the steering wheel, we do have controls on the steering wheel for things like cruise control and then navigating your digital driver information display, which is great and you can adjust exactly what you're seeing and exactly what the uh, display looks like depending on what you're doing. No head up display or anything, just a really great driver information display. We also do have the rear view mirror with rear view camera. So you can flip it up and see from the rear view camera's perspective instead of just the mirror itself, which is a great feature I think as well. And with that, I think it's time to get this thing out on the road, see how it drives for daily driving. And then we'll see if we can get it a little bit off road. There's not much to do out here, but uh, We'll try to take it a little bit off-road, talk about some of the off-roading tech in here, and then we'll pull back over, talk about the price, and we'll wrap up the video with some of my final thoughts. So let's continue. Let's get it into gear with that rotary dial. And take off. 
So obviously with that air suspension, this is an incredibly smooth and comfortable ride. It is quite often that off-roading vehicles give you a smooth ride because their suspension has so much play. But this Grand Cherokee with the air suspension, the different modes you can put it in, the different ride heights you can put it in, definitely gives you a nice smooth ride. And it's not just smooth, but it is fairly quiet in here. A lot of off-roading vehicles are not very quiet. So the fact that you can get so much performance out of here and still have a nice quiet cabin for longer road trips or even just day-to-day -day driving is fantastic. Fuel economy here is 19 miles per gallon city, 26 highway. Nothing that'll blow your socks off, but it's decent for a big, heavy, off-roadable SUV. And again, that's specific to the 4x4 with the 3.6 V6 under the hood, the package that we have here. And its road mannerisms are just fine. Turns in just fine. Driving position is good. Steering wheel feel is really nice. These heated and ventilated seats are really nice. And with those 18 inch wheels and beefy tires, again, it just adds to the comfortableness of driving this thing and obviously going around corners and stuff it's just nice and smooth you do have a lot of safety features in here stuff like radar guided cruise control lane keeping assist and all that just adds to the ease of use of day-to-day -day driving but you're going to get that stuff in a lot of the other trims when looking at the grand cherokee as well Obviously, what's special and important about this one is the off-roading. Let's do a bit of an acceleration test getting up onto the highway here. So, come to a stop until we're ready to turn. So, we'll start here at zero and turn in about 11 miles an hour. Punch it. That's 60. 70 highway speed so get up to speed just fine and then like I said highway driving nice comfortable long road trips in this thing are great it eats up the miles no problem especially if you can hit that uh, radar guided cruise control and just kind of uh, let the car do most of the work it's not the best system out there but it is a good system to get and so as I've said many times there's no really great off-roading areas around where I live where I can review these vehicles but I have driven the Trailhawk on off-roading courses during events and stuff like that and obviously you can see other footage on YouTube of these things doing incredible things off-road I'll put a couple of clips in we'll talk a little bit about uh, what makes this so good at off-roading and then I'll pull back over we'll talk about the price competition and we'll start wrapping the video up there with some of my final thoughts but let's uh let's talk a little bit about the off-road all right and this is just some footage from jeep and i kind of already showed it but uh this now has electronic semi-active dampening it delivers up to class leading 11.3 inch of ground clearance and 24 inches of water forwarding. So you can get into some pretty heavy stuff. It has a class exclusive sway bar disconnect. This system lets you conquer rough terrain by automatically disengaging the front sway bar when driving under 18 miles per hour in four wheel low mode. The front wheel can then drop and compress for maximum articulation, making it an absolute game changer for extreme off-road situations. And we do have what Jeep calls Quadra Drive 2 with a rear electronic limited slip diff. So like I said, and you should have no doubt, the Grand Cherokee Trailhawk can go on some trails and can kick butt out there. Obviously, if you want something more capable, the Wrangler is gonna be that. But for what you have here, a big SUV, the Grand Cherokee Trailhawk can get it done. All right, guys, with the driving 
and everything else out of the way. Let's quickly talk about the price of the Grand Cherokee. The base price of the base Grand Cherokee, which is still a pretty good deal, is $38,720. So you're already pricing it above a lot of the competition's base price, but you're getting a lot more in the base than a lot of that competition. Of course, you can now get the Grand Cherokee also in a 4x2 instead of just a 4x4, which reduces the price a little bit more for people that are never going to take this thing off-road. I would say if you're getting a Grand Cherokee, get the 4x4 at the minimum. If you're looking at the Trailhawk, the base price there is $51,275. And the full MSRP of what I'm sitting in here is $59,945, which is a lot of money. But again, comparing it to the competition, things like the uh, Toyota 4Runner, the Land Rover uh, Defender, maybe something like the Acadia or Terrain AT4, the Ford Explorer, and so many more two-row nice SUVs. This thing really sits in a great spot. But let me give you some of my final thoughts. Let's jump out and wrap this thing up. And after a full week of driving the Trailhawk Grand Cherokee, obviously you know my final thoughts. They are that this is a fantastic SUV. The styling, the tech, the ruggedness, the off-roadiness, especially with this Trailhawk. Personally, I probably wouldn't buy the Trailhawk. There's not enough that I would actually do with it off-road, and almost every other version is really capable off-road, so what little bit of off-roading I might actually do can be handled just fine with some of the other versions. But if you have like a ranch or you're doing some trailing, camping, overlanding, this Trailhawk is almost unbeatable. Obviously, I'm interested to hear your thoughts, so let me know in the comments below. Of course, if you enjoyed the video, please hit that thumbs up button. Also, go check out TXGarage.com where we have a lot of written reviews as well as event and news coverage from a lot of different authors over there. Great site to uh, keep up to date with the automotive world, especially here in Texas. But with that, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. What?